Good morning and welcome everyone to our Docs of Day of London online ministry. My name is Matt. Um, and I'm Ian. It's great to welcome you today at Docs of Day Online. Um, if you are joining us for the first time, welcome. It's great to have you with us. Um, we want to ask you to, to tell us in the chat today what is a standout moment from the past three habits that Matt shared with us. So um, if you want to pick up your phone, go to doxadeolondon.online.church and engage in chat with us. Tell us what your, your best um, standout moments was the last couple of weeks. Brilliant. And as well as that, you're welcome at the same time to post and just let us know where you're joining from uh, today. Uh, so it's been great seeing a few of you connect. Uh, Gordon and Jill are here first every week, so the challenge has yes. been set, okay? They've laid down the gauntlet. Uh, going forward, let's see if you can get online before Gordon before and Jill Before Gordon can. and Jill, yes. Because <laughs> they're like trigger fingers, they're there straight away. Uh, but welcome everyone, if it's your first time joining in, in ministry this morning, we want to really welcome you. We're not yes. watching something, we're participating in life together. Yes. It's happening in this way, so it's a little different, but great to see you. And our online chat hosts today are Marit and LaRue. So thank you so much, guys. Give them a big cheer and say hi to them in the chat below. And also, Jahan is on YouTube this morning. Uh, and if for anybody throughout the course of the morning, and I have seen that there are one or two already who've already engaged in the prayer button, if you want yeah. to pray at any moment with one of our chat hosts, you can, on the online.church platform, just select that with the hosts. And um, they're available to pray with you at any yes, time. Yes, I'd love to pray with you. Yes, and, um, yeah. and so we want to see everybody feel relaxed and at home and ready to engage. And just a second, my phone is going. Hi, Sue. Good morning. Hi. Hi, Matt. How are you? I am doing well, thank you. How are you? Yeah, good, thank you. Great. Is it a good week? Yeah, so far, yes. Okay, excellent. Thank you so much for calling. I'd just love to hear what will you be doing around about 10 o'clock on Monday morning? Well, the short answer is that I don't know. The longer answer is that since COVID, my Mondays have been quite different because I can't teach back at the school um, that I normally do. Um, so it could be housework, it could be checking emails, helping with gardening, anything really. Don't okay. yet know. Okay. How is everything in the O'Hagan household? Yeah, we're fine. Maria's in Leeds, so it's just the three of us at the moment. Brilliant. Okay. And Sue, just it would be great to hear what are you passionate to see God do through you? Um, well, yesterday, for the first time, I started to tutor a, a year six girl who's from a more disadvantaged background, um, needs a bit of extra help with her English, um, you know, prior to getting to secondary school. And I think that this has been on my heart from God for some time. So really pleased to be doing this. Oh, that sounds like something so rewarding as well. So yeah. what sparked that thought, do you think? Where did that come from? Well, I remember somebody um, prophesying quite a few years ago and, and they were saying about me helping children with um, reading and with English. And um, for a while I did some English as a foreign language um, for a few years, um, and, but I haven't done any for uh, some years and now I just feel that this is actually more important um, to help this girl and perhaps others like her. Wow, wow, that's awesome, Sue. And and how can how can we pray for you? Yeah, just pray um, for wisdom, um, for patience, and that God will show me clearly what He wants me to do. Okay, brilliant. Can I pray for you now? Please do. Yes. Brilliant. Let's pray for Sue together, shall we? Uh, Father, thank you for Sue. Thank you for her life. Thank you that uh, in this moment we are hearing how you are leading her. Father, thank you that uh, you have thoughts that are good and high of Sue and her life. And Father, I, I want to thank you that as a family, we can pray for her now, cheer her on in the spirit. And, and Father, ask, will you reveal to her more and more uh, the wisdom of heaven for the things that she's involved in. Lord, thank you that she is stepping into words of prophecy that have been spoken over her, and she's able to look back and, and see that. And uh, Lord, we celebrate this together. And God, I pray that for Sue, she will see 
uh, what it is you're doing through her as someone bringing change and transformation in her world uh, and especially into this the life of this uh, young girl that she's now tutoring in these weeks ahead god we speak more favor more blessing peace and wisdom over sue in jesus name amen Sue, may you have a really great rest of your day and a fantastic week. And we look forward to hearing how things carry on going from strength to strength with you. Bless you. Thank you, Matt. Bye-bye. Well, that was great to have a conversation there with Sue and really uplifting to hear her story. Uh, thank you so much, Sue. And great meeting you all together this morning. Just before we do that, remember that we do take communion this morning, but what we're gonna be doing today is having communion a little bit earlier on. So you might wanna just in the meantime, get those elements together. Yes. But we wanna say, we're all city changers. That's how, we, uh, that's how we encourage one another and lift one another and stir one another in our everyday. Mm. It doesn't matter where we are, whether we're at, in a conversation with a colleague or it's a family situation. Yeah. We are city changers. And it's great to be able to do these stories together, these highlights of our people, that are part of this family, wanting to see the transformation yeah of people's lives through our lives as we connect with Jesus. And welcome to Dave Kempton and to Marla and to Sue and Jeff who are back from holiday. Welcome back guys. Welcome to Wendy, Pickavers, um, that's Paul and Mary of course. <laughs> <laughs> and to Pat, lovely to see you all. What a great way to connect together this morning. Great way to connect, yes. Yeah. Um, you can also engage your life in giving and in a, a generous lifestyle. So, Matt, I'm going to share something, a short scripture out of Romans 10 verse 9. Um, it says, if you declare with your mouth, so you have to do something. Mm. Jesus, and so if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Um, many of us have, um, have grown up with a mindset of, um, we are taught of the death of Jesus. So you carry your cross. It's a, it's a suffering thing. It's a, it's a thing where you have to give up stuff. But the, the theology goes on into God was raised from the dead as mm. well. And in that sense, we can also live our lives generously from a raised from the grave perspective and not from a carry my cross perspective. Mm. So I want to um, challenge you today to, to give generously, to live generous lives with a perspective of believing in your heart that God has done this for you as well. He's raised your level of generosity because he was raised from the grave and we were raised with him. So as you engage in giving today, you Brilliant. can do it online. Mm. Um, and yes, we, we pray that, that, that we will all have an understanding of God's grace and God's life mm. over our lives and not a, a downcasted, mentality about our giving and finances. Brilliant, brilliant. So I hope you took that message to heart and join in together with us yes. as we just carry on with ministry this morning. So we're gonna um, take a moment to, to have communion together as a church, so get your elements ready, um, and then we're gonna go into worship and the word. Brilliant. Hi, my name's Barbara, and it's a privilege to be sharing communion with you. This week, I've been reflecting on the ups and downs of life you often hear people saying things like, oh, I just need to get things back onto an even keel. But life's more like a series of peaks and troughs, which we all have to navigate daily. The only constant that we can be 100% sure of is the loving presence of our Father God. You know, there isn't a single moment when he isn't ready to listen, to speak or to act. And yet we spend most of our time treading the path and we forget to invite him to walk along with us. Our father was so desperate to get back into that intimate relationship with us again that he sent his only son, Jesus, to die on the cross. And yet, still, sometimes we forget that our father is there. So this act of communion serves as a reminder of the greatest sacrifice ever made. In Paul's letter to the church in Corinth, he writes, On the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. And then he broke it in pieces and said, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In that same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. Jesus' body was broken for us. 
we call it salvation, because in believing that Jesus died and rose again, our relationship with our Father God has been restored and we can share in that same eternal life. So let's eat the bread together and remember. And Jesus' blood was shed for us. His sacrifice paid the price for all of our sins and it means that we also share in the righteousness of God. And all of this is available to anyone who believes. So let's drink our wine together and give thanks. Let's pray. Father God, as we remember the sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross, I pray that today we'll never take this simple act for granted and that we'll remember to invite you to share in our daily walk and that we will remember to celebrate and share this amazing truth far and wide. Amen.
This particular habit has been a massive challenge for me in bringing to the table because it feels as if in almost every situation throughout the course of prep and in all, over the last few days that I have faced the challenge of needing to stand still when my mind has wanted to run away with itself. To stand on the things that are right and to stand on the things that are true and not to be distracted and not to be caught up in things that are not really important and not meant for me in that moment. As I think about Matt BC and Matt AC, I see that there is a bit of a difference. I can see that I've changed before COVID. I never really thought in great depth about what's finite and what's infinite. And I, I don't think that I, I really had much of a need to think about it. I, I kind of went through the motions when thinking about the things that I've got a, 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 a date stamp on them. But since COVID, uh, Matt, after COVID, I'm much more aware that there are things in life that really are outside of the bounds of what I'm able to control and are outside of my ability to be able to, to do much about. And, and what it's highlighted for me, uh, once again, although I can stand on the certainty that I'm a son of God, that I'm, I'm, I'm a friend of God, that I'm an heir to his kingdom, although I can stand on those things, I've realized that I am created. I'm not the creator. There is only one creator. There is only one person who is able to hold together the wholeness of life, to be able to sustain it and create it. And, and for me, this period of time has been quite stark in realizing this. And I think generally speaking, uh, we don't, as people, enjoy the thought of being outside of ability to control something. I mean, who, who doesn't want to be able to set the parameters uh, around their lives and know that they, they are safe from a poisonous snake creeping in through the boundaries and biting you in the dark. I mean, who doesn't want to be in a situation where there, where there are things set in place in life that bring a degree of security and safety and contentment? I mean, it's, it's a longing of people. And unless you know someone that you can trust in and you can put your, your faith and you can put your trust in, to be able to be that safety, that security, that contentment, then it is going to perhaps be a very challenging walk of life. I was struck when I read what Paul wrote to Timothy in, in his letter to him in chapter 6, after speaking to Timothy about having things that he needed and keeping his himself still and not allowing his mind to run off on things, to be content in life. Paul says this, he says, we brought nothing into the world and we cannot take anything out of it. And that is stark to read and maybe stark for you this morning. A few years ago, I received a, a phone call. I received a phone call from a, a, a really good friend of mine someone I've grown really deeply close with over the years. And it was one of these phone calls you never really want to receive. You never want to be on the receiving end of it. You never want to be the person who is having to talk about all of these things. My, my friend was going through a, a real crisis. I mean, a big crisis, like a life-changing, altering crisis. It was, it was terrible. I can't, I'm not going to go into the detail. I can't go into the detail. And in that conversation, I, I can just remember the pain, hearing the pain in his voice, hearing the, the fear in his voice, knowing that this challenge, this crisis that is before him and his family, uh, that really it was outside of ability to do anything about it, to, to, to be able to control it. Now there was a, a need to respond to the crisis that had happened in their lives. And I, and I can remember this conversation. I can remember everything about it. Not, not necessarily the detail of the words, but I can remember where I was. I can remember the time of day. I can remember the weather. I can remember the, I can remember the smell. Um, as I'd stepped out of the office to take the phone call, I thought it was going to be a five-minute call. It was raining. I was in a shirt. I, was, I can remember the rain falling. 
I can remember getting wet. I can remember the smell of the rain in the road. And as I'm chatting with him, and I'm realizing that, gosh, how do I, how do I, how do I respond here? How do I answer anything here? Um, I, I felt complete helplessness. Um, I felt, in a massive sense, sad and hurt for, for him. And as the conversation went on, I listened, I cried with him, we prayed together on the phone. I mean, this was a long call. It was difficult. And then I heard God's Spirit. And God's Spirit said, I can hear him clearly say to me, Matt, you need to pause, you need to stand still. You need to not let your mind run off there. You need to stand. You need to, 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 to somehow find that contentment in who I am, in who I am to you, who, in who I am to this friend of mine, in who I am in the grand scheme, big picture of things. I am the Lord. And you need in this moment to not run ahead of yourself, not allow your mind to start running. You need to stand on me. Find your contentment in me. Because I want to show you, as I want to show your friend, that as heirs to the kingdom, you are also heirs to my peace. You are heirs to my hope. It was, a, it was an incredible moment. All this is going on inside me as I'm on the phone and chatting with my friend. And it really was as if God was saying to me, stand still. Don't let yourself, your thoughts, your mind run off. Find contentment in me here. We have daily struggles with things of contentment. Uh, we, we, we might struggle with the company we're around or the company we're not around and we, we're content or discontent about that. Um, it could be issues of attitudes that we experience from people that we, we, we would hope to receive from people. Um, and there's a degree of contentment or discontentment about that. I mean, it's, it's in everything. It's in fashion. It's in, it's in our social lives. It's in how many shares we have of a, of a photo that we posted on, on, on social media or how many likes we've had to our Instagram reels. I mean, we, we can find contentment and discontentment in so many little things, smaller things throughout every day. And the reason that it's important to note this and to actually take a step back and just consider what are some of those things that we do have and face that challenge with is because when the crisis comes, how can we manage to be content in the big crisis when we are perhaps not even managing to have a grip properly in a godly way on the smaller things that come our way and that we deal with and we think through and we act with and we act on in everyday life. And I, I, I think as well that there's a, the, the degree of our, our mental, our, our emotional, our spiritual health as we look forward to the months ahead and we, and we, and we negotiate however, however life plays itself out in the next few months, um, it's going to be so crucial that we've got a grip on and an understanding on, and then not just the understanding, but life lived on the premise of being content in Jesus, of being able to say, I can stand still, and not worry about my mind running, because in him I am able. I'm able. For whatever that moment is, or whatever that conversation is, or whatever that situation or that restriction, I am able with him. I wanna I wanna just highlight a verse from John chapter 8. And and I love this what he says, John writes. And he, he quotes Jesus saying that whoever is of God hears the words of God. Now, very simple. Whoever is of God hears the words of God. The reason that is a massive verse for me in this moment is because there's an acknowledgement. There's an acknowledgement that for anyone who becomes aware of God and knows God, there is an implication that you can't just know him, but that there's an entrance 
together into relationship where we can enjoy knowing his thoughts knowing the words of god and what that brings into situations is incredible by the way let me just say this as we think about contentment i'm, I'm not i'm not suggesting for one moment that contentment is lack is going through a moment of lack and just being content about it poverty that sort of thing we're, we're we're created for more than that. Scripture tells us in so many places that we are created to live an abundant life with Christ. And, and, and I want to just name that color to the mast at this moment because it would be very easily easy for us to sit back and just say, okay, well, whatever comes my way, I'll be content with it. I'm not quite sure that is entirely true. And we're going to unpack some of this right now. There's a moment just a few chapters earlier in John, where, where Jesus has a, an interaction, a conversation with a woman in the middle of the day at a well. And what, what happens in this discussion and, and how, he, how he treats her with a sense of honor and respect and love in a time when men and women socially were not to be seen together in public. Um, she not only was of a different gender, but she was of a different race. She was a Samaritan. And, and they didn't mix. They just didn't do that. But Jesus, in the middle of the day, doesn't let boundaries restrict him from bringing truth into her life. And in the conversation, as she's drawing water from the well, and Jesus says these words in chapter 4, verse 13 and 14, if you want to follow in your, in your Bibles, Jesus says to her, everyone who drinks this water, the water you're drawing from the well, everyone who drinks this water will thirst again. I mean, that's common sense, Jesus. I mean, every day I wake up and I'm thirsty. A few hours later, I'm thirsty. This evening, I'm thirsty. And so <laughs> it, it's common sense. But this is what he's driving at. He's, he's showing her that there's something more that can be found in something that our body needs. That is a source to our body. Water is a source to our body. Jesus says this, whoever drinks of the water that I will give him shall never thirst. But the water that I will give him will become in him a well of water springing up to eternal life. That, 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 that idea of a springing well is, is, a, is, is something called an artesian well. It's where there's, there's a bow in the ground. And, and the water which sits in there receives a pressure from the earth on the top and it pushes the water up and it just flows and it just flows. And that's what Jesus is saying. It's like a spring. It's this thing that comes up and you overflow. This, this is what we can know for ourselves, that we can share with our families, that we can share with our friends and our colleagues, with the people that we know, with the world that needs to hear this message, that there is a different source in life. His name is Jesus. Good habits formed early make all the difference. That is the quote we're using uh, just as, as part of this habits uh, series, habits focus that we're doing at the moment. It's, it's a quote from Aristotle. Good habits formed early make all the difference. Why would we not want to implement the habit of standing still when our mind wants to run? It's really important for us. Two points. The first thing is that you can fight a losing battle or you can surrender to Jesus, to his peace. Do you know, there's a couple of things that could happen. We, we, can, we can end up fighting this losing battle by just allowing our minds to run, which I've already spoken enough about in this moment. The alternative is that we start looking for contentment in other things, where we start looking for areas where we can find and manage personal control, where, where we, we can rely on uh, perhaps an ability um, or a title, <laughs> um, image. We start looking to things about image, finding contentment we start searching in others and, and other and other places that's that's where we begin to fight the losing battle because we're starting to look where the source is not the source is jesus 
surrender to his peace. That's the, the step we should take, to surrender to him and know this contentment for our lives. I, I, I love what Paul says. I have had a revelation this week as I read what Paul wrote to the church in Philippi. Uh, just so you know, Philippi is modern day Kavala. If you want to know and look on a map where this is, it's, it's the town or the city Kavala, which is just on the coast in Greece. And what, what Paul writes here, I've read again and again, and I've had a revelation this week. He says in chapter 4, when he writes to the church, I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. I've read this, I can't tell you how many times. Listen to his opening words here. I have learned. There was a time when Paul, the Apostle Paul, didn't understand, didn't live from a place of contentment. He's being very open and honest here about this. And, and he's saying there was a need to work through and, 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 and bring that into life, bring it into daily thinking, to, to live with the contentment, to understand contentment, to understand God's involvement and his place in life i love it and then we come to this verse which is so so uh, commonly shared uh, perhaps as an encouragement if, if you're new to church or if you're hearing a message like this for the first time and you just heard me say that i can do all things through him who strengthens me through christ jesus who strengthens me that verse is is like every week in a church someone will share that with someone it's 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 crazy it's one of those really popular verses. And, and we, we sort of dish, dish it out as in, yeah, I can do it. I can do all things. I've got the power. And, and no, it's within the context of understanding God's involvement in life to such a degree that we are content with what we live and so in every situation. <laughs> I know that I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Absolutely beautiful word. When, when Paul writes to one of the church leaders that he's raised, that he's grown, that he's set in place to, to care for a church, he writes to Timothy, he writes two letters to Timothy, and in the first one, Paul says that godliness with contentment is great good. Now pause on that for a moment. Godliness with contentment is great good. Godliness God-likeness. Scripture tells us that we're made in the image and the likeness of God. The godliness, our identity, held in, I was going to say balance. I don't even think it's balance. I'm not sure what the word is. So just come with me on this. Identity held alongside contentment in who God is, what he has given and placed in you, what he has put as a potential within you, what opportunity is he has given you already. Everything held together is great gain. So where, where do you stand with that? Here's the second point. Wants and desires betray. And the question is, what is content meant? What content are you and I meant for? Here's the thing with, with wants and, and desires. They can betray because our wants and our desires might stem from a place of jealousy. That someone else has got something and I'd like that. Thing. It can betray. Uh, it, it, can be, it can be in the unknown. Greed, comparison, those are things that, <laughs> that they can come from a place of want and desire, but they betray. And Jesus says in Luke chapter 12, funny when he says this, he's just spoken about acknowledging Christ 
And what he goes on to speak about next is not being anxious. And in this, in between these two topics, when he's talking to someone about being content with life, about living with a habit of standing still and not letting thoughts and minds run in all sorts of directions, Jesus says, watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. And so maybe the question to ask is, when you're thinking about that, that what is content meant? Maybe the question is to ask, God, okay, God, are you giving me an opportunity to show something different, to show and demonstrate something different to the world around me? And maybe a, qu a good question to ask God is, okay, are you giving me an opportunity to learn something with you here? I I'm just going to end with a little story. Uh, when I was younger, where I grew up, a fair would come to our local town every year. It was an annual fair. If you were in school, uh, if you were in the playground, if you were in the classroom, if you were on the bus on the way there, if you saw your friends in the street, the questions were, are you going to the fair? Have you been to the fair? How much pocket money have you saved up to go to the fair? What rides did you go on? What rides would you suggest we go on? What sweets did you eat? Did you get the candy floss? It was like the, the talk of the entire area. Everyone talked about and went to the fair. And I can remember, I was probably about 10 years old, and talking about this whole thought of, of wants and desires for trade. We, underst we, we understand that in maturity, we move from a place of living like a child, growing into adulthood. And that is a very physical, biological thing, but it's also a spiritual thing. We are spirit beings. And we are created with a spirit that has the fullness to, to work with and, and to cooperate and to to align with God and his purposes. But we have to work with maturity. And this is an analogy of that because when I was about 10 years old and I went to the fair, I had this want and I had this desire to get on a particular ride and I had this want and I had this desire to go and buy a, a, a bag of sweets that I, 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 I knew what this sweet bag looked like, right? It was one of these cones and it had it had uh, a twisted marshmallow throughout it, and then on the inside were all these big jellies and, and uh, more marshmallows. I, I, I love marshmallows, and maybe a bit of fudge and popcorn, and then on the top a bit of candy floss. I mean, it was one of the, it was like the, 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 the sweet bag spectacular, and I wanted this. And at that age, I went and I bought the sweets, and I scoffed the sweets. I ate them all in one, and then I went and then I queued and I got on the ride. And I went into this ride that I've been waiting to go on because now I was at that age where I was allowed to go on it. There was an age limit. I got onto the ride. It was the ride where when you go in, they shut the door behind you. You're in a, a circle. It feels like a circular room with probably another 10 or 15 people. And you were all stood against the wall. And as you stood against the wall, this thing starts spinning. And as it spins and as it spins and as it spins, the gravity pulls you, it throws you against the wall and you are stuck. You cannot bring yourself away from the wall. Uh, you, you are spinning around. What it allows you to do is do all sorts of twists and turns. So perhaps when the, actually the ride finishes, people fall down off the wall and then they get up off the floor. And we get up and we walk out. And then I saw all my sweets for a second time. I needed to learn a lesson there that my wants and my desires might betray me. And actually I must realize what is meant for me? What are the contents for my life that are meant for me? We can apply that in so many different ways, different ways. Yours might not be the same as mine. And we live in a challenging time. We live in, we're living in a very challenging time for all sorts of reasons, but it's also an exciting time. I've said already, I think it's a great time to be alive. I think it's a great time for the church. I think it's an amazing opportunity for us to explore this journey of life with God, even though there is unknown ahead of us. Every day, God wants to see his kingdom thrive through our lives.
The kingdom does not shrink or retract or hide away, it advances. And I want to end with this. It's an opportunity for you to say, yes, Lord, I want to instill this habit in my life. I don't want to wait for this to happen. I want to say yes. I want to make a habit of being able to stand still, content in you, not allowing my mind, not, not, not living with, with the experiences of, of a mind that runs here, there, and everywhere, or chasing after things, or feeling like I'm without, but actually learning with them. I want to pray for you. I want to invite you in this moment, in a very different way, kneel. You want to kneel before God? I'm, I want to charge you. I want to charge you from Scripture. I want to charge you with what Paul wrote to Timothy. If you can stand still when the mind wants to run, if you want to stand still when the mind wants to run, then here's my charge. As we kneel before our Creator, you, man and woman of God, run for your life from all distraction. Pursue a righteous life, a life of wonder, faith, love, steadiness, courtesy. Run hard and fast in the faith. Seize the eternal life. The life you were called to. The life you have embraced in the presence of so many witnesses. I'm charging you before the life-giving God and before Christ. I'm charging you before him. Who took his stand before Pontius Pilate and didn't give an inch. Keep this command to the letter and don't slack off. Our master, Jesus Christ, is on his way. He'll show up right on time. His arrival guaranteed by the blessed and undisputed ruler, high king, high God. He's the only one death can't touch. His light so bright, no one can get close. He's never been seen by human eyes. Human eyes can't take him in. Honor to him and eternal rule, God the Father. And all, my dear son and daughter, guard the treasure you were given. Guard it with your life. Avoid the talk show religion and the practice confusion of the so-called experts around. People caught up in a lot of talk can miss the whole point of faith. Overwhelming grace keep you. Godliness and contentment be your gain. Stand still when the mind wants to run. Learn in whatever situation you are in to be content and see that you can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. That is your charge today. And I pray this in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of His Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Meeting now. Cool. It's so great to be able to pray together and I just want to invite you, uh, maybe you, something struck you in the message this morning mm. um, and you really want to receive prayer in this moment, uh, we want to pray for you and we want to invite yes. you in this with us to invite the Holy Spirit to just to settle some of these things in your life and to perhaps mm. clear away, help clear away in, in your thinking those distractions um, or those doors perhaps elements of life that want to take you off in a different direction and rather to say, yes, Lord, but I, I recognize that I need contentment in my life and I want to see that outworked and I want to pray for you right now. So 
let's yes. let's do let's that pray. uh lord jesus we want to pray thanking you <laughs> that you are the savior of our lives and in every possible way jesus you provide for us and god i want to pray for those men and women who are listening and have been hearing your Holy Spirit nudge them this morning, prompt them. Uh, God, I want to pray that there is an openness in their heart mm. um, and an openness in their thinking to receive from you right now. Thank you, God. You don't ask us to come and do a test um, for you to be able to do something in our lives. You just say, come to me. And, and Lord, I want to pray, Holy Spirit, that you settle uh, something of the beginning of the new habit of contentment in the lives of people today. Thank you, God, that in you, we can see transformation come in our lives in this way. And so more of you, Holy Spirit, we pray. More of you, Holy Spirit. Maybe as people are holding out their hands, maybe you're sitting there and you've never prayed before. I just want to invite you, just hold out your hand with us. And I want to pray, Holy Spirit, make yourself real in this yes, moment. Thank you, Lord. Make yourself real in this moment. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that you are bringing peace to people's hearts. Thank you, God, that you're bringing, people, uh, bringing a, a, a realization that there is a better way, and that is hand in hand with you. Jesus, teach us contentment. And I just pray, Holy Spirit, that you seal this on our hearts today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In this moment, may you, maybe you just want to say with me, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, thank you that, that you are our model of contentness. Mm. And we want to um, say thank you, Lord, for, for prayer testimonies we can celebrate today, Lord. Thank you that Nicola could get a blood transfusion. Yes, Lord. Thank you that, that um, blood is flowing through her body to mm. heal her mm. completely. Mm. And thank you that, that because of your blood, Lord, we can have your healing. Thank you, Lord. We can, yes, we Lord. can raise from that place of illness and say, God has raised me from this and I've got new blood. I've got your blood, Lord. And thank you that we can celebrate that today. And thank you that we can pray for people that's lonely, Lord. There's so many people that's lonely in our city, in our area, that, that you will show them to us, Lord, that we can pray for, for, for your guidance on their lives and that they can let go of the feeling of loneliness and know that you are there, Lord, and mm. that you will bring people over their paths that, they can, you, can, that they can celebrate life with. Thank you mm. that we can, um, as a community church, pray together and support those people that's mm. lonely. Thank, thank you, Lord. Thank you for, for, for testimony. Testimony changes lives. And we want to say thank you for your testimony, Father. Mm. Amen. 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 Brilliant. We've got some great news, and you, most of you know about this. We are, um, Doxa Deo is launching an online campus, doxadeo.church. Have a look at this. So please follow us on Instagram, on Facebook, doxadeo.church. It'll be great for you to share this news and to get people involved in this online church community. Um, on the 22nd and 21st and 22nd of December, um, Doxadeo Community Church is, is engaging in Christmas lunch on Jesus. Um, you can give online. You can um, sign up online to, the, to distribute and to pack the hampers on the 21st and 22nd of December please sign up for this great community event. Brilliant. And we're so looking forward. It's always an exciting time yes. for us as a ministry to reach out and bless people with the news of Jesus and in a very practical way as well. Yes. So the, the website it will have been on the screen already for you this morning. Please head there. You can do all of those things that Ian's just mentioned through the website link. Yes. Uh, and we look forward to connecting. Maybe you have someone that has heard about the project before but never been involved. Mm we will be formulating how it's going to happen uh, yeah. in 2020 because of the whole COVID situation. Uh, but we want to see 
as many people engage in blessing our community, blessing and touching yeah. our city for the glory and the fame of Jesus. And uh, yeah. as a church, we are, although we're not meeting in larger gatherings throughout the course of the rest of this year, which we communicated over the last few weeks already, we are also at the moment exploring how can we do this in smaller numbers because there are numbers that we're allowed to gather in, perhaps in homes um, and in smaller groups and smaller situations. And so trust with us, explore with us, um, and we look forward for those who are comfortable to do so to yes. start meeting in smaller groups again in the weeks and the months ahead, as long as we're allowed to. By the way, I do know that there will be people tuning in and part of this morning, and maybe where you are, uh, you are in a full lockdown in your region. Um, mm. So please just be mindful that whatever you do, that you follow the guidelines of the government for wherever it is that you live. And that's how yeah. we're navigating the season as a church, really. We're taking our lead from... Mm. Um, from what we're hearing from the from the prof professional voices and the leaders of our nation. Yes, and if you want to join an a online um, City Changes group, please go to the website and sign up to join a City Changes group in your area. Brilliant. And last week, finally, one last thing to share. Um, this morning, we communicated on our social uh, media uh, platforms uh, an amazing uh, project that we as a church are connecting with. Uh, we're connecting our City Changer projects along with KT churches, our local Kingston churches, in something called Love Your Neighbor. And what I'd love mm. to ask you to do is head to our Facebook page, our Instagram page, and watch this video, like the video, share the video, because this is an amazing opportunity for us to get involved with yes. churches across the nation in blessing our community. And I mentioned last week that we had some exciting news. This was part of it. There is more coming in the week ahead, but also there's a very short video that we're gonna watch where I caught up with Paul in the week because of an amazing act of miracle that yes. we really can only attribute to God. Um, yes, and it's, it's to be able to help us facilitate something of the Love Your Neighbor uh, mm. ministry into the borough. Check out this video, and then we're gonna to join together for benediction at the end. I'm heading over now for the first time to a new building that we as a ministry are really excited to share news about and it's going to be the base for our City Changer projects for the next six months. So let's go and meet Paul and check it out. Let's go, I can see Paul. Here we are, making our way for the first time. Hi Matt, come on in. This is Unit 7, this is the building that the council gave us last week. It's an incredible journey, you know, we only asked for the building on Monday. We had discussions on Tuesday. Wednesday they made a decision, Thursday they gave us the keys, uh, and Friday they gave us the contract to sign. Wow. And so we're in. So this is the building, this is on two floors. This is the upstairs floor and then the downstairs exactly the same size. Well, we've been talking to them about all the work we've been doing during COVID around food, around helping people with issues of you know, debt and employability. And that's why they've given us the building. And it's not just for the projects we're doing as city changer projects, uh, but it's also for the things we're doing together with the other churches. Yeah. So KT churches, we're running food programs, we're running employability, we've got Grow Baby helping people, we've got Christians Against Poverty. So this floor is going to be really administration, meetings, it might even be making videos, telling the story of what we're doing. Downstairs is going to be more operational. It's going to be the warehouse, it's where we're going to pack the bags of food for food bank, it's where we're going to make the kettle packs up for the homeless community, uh, and really what we want to demonstrate is there's so much we can do with what's a relatively small amount of space, and this is rent free, we're not paying for this, now the council's giving it, the really exciting thing is they're looking whether we perhaps need a bigger building than wow. this and what they can find, so it's been a really exciting week last week, great to be moving in here and starting yeah. to get it to take shape yeah. this week. Uh, and then next week we'll be starting to use it with volunteers in doing activity. What goes through your mind then when you think about the journey of all these years of being in the community? I mean, what's going through your head? Yeah, I think we've, we've worked out that we didn't need the office in that way. We could work mobile. Um, but what's been great with this, it allows the projects that all the churches together are running to come together. It not just makes us joined up in how we're working together, it puts us in a space. Mm. 
Um, and there's conversations going on just about how what we're doing can help someone else uh, in another project they're doing. And so those, the number of conversations that we've had, I think, since March across churches about working together to meet the needs. Uh, and the fact that, I mean, the council talks about us as the church, you know, it is known as the church doing this. And I think that's a really good thing for us to recognise that we've got lots of individual churches doing mm. projects, but when we come together, this is the, what the church does, and that's really great. We can you know, show that in our town. Yeah. What are your expectations for the future? Um, I, I want to see this, this really becoming a, a hub that is exciting, that people come and see, and but they see the impact that happens out there from what happens in here. Um, so, you know, there's going to be desks there where we're going to do advocacy support. People are going to have debts cancelled because of what we do here. People are going to see uh, health improvements because of what happens here. People are going to see housing situations turned around because of what happens here. Um, people are going to see moves into job and training because of what happens here. And, and so the church has this great opportunity just to, to come and say to people what God says, that we're valued, that we're loved, and we're going to show that in really practical ways from this building. So once again, we just want to say... God, thank you that you provide. Thank you that you provided this amazing space. And Lord, we want to trust you for what you want to do from here. That was very encouraging and, and we are very grateful for the provision that God has given us as a church to be able to engage in this community project and to have the space available for us to grow and to bless the community. We're going to go into benediction now. It was great to have you with us today. Um, may you have a great week. May you have a blessed week. Um, and before we go, we, we read the scripture to, um, together. Remember that every word is God-breathed mm. for, for teaching, for equipping, for disciplining us in God's righteousness. So let's read together from Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 9, verse 8. Yes, God is more than ready to overwhelm you with every form of grace, so that you will have more than enough of everything, every moment and in every way. He will make you overflow with abundance in every good thing you do. Amen. Your love wants to spark that said. The spirit alive and love wants the anchor from heaven to not just survive and love wants the compass at sea when stars move the side and love chased me down and it found me when I try to hide Let the crown of creation stand in line. And love shone the darkness aside. And love made a right. 
Yeah. 